Hey guys, it's another beautiful day in North Carolina. Uh, we've got Fred, remnants of Fred coming through today. So uh, we've got showers on and off. I just had a big shower. I was getting ready to go out and ride my, my uh, Palerna. I just installed the new freewheel on it. And uh, that's what this video is about. It's about the freewheel. And uh, I will go through step by step of what I did to change out the freewheel on it. Also, if you notice, I've got two new tires on it too. I've got my Kendra Craze, and these are road tires, and looking forward to see what this thing's going to feel like now, since I've got just about all my mods on it, all my major mods, if nothing, nothing else, already on the bike now. As you notice, my handlebars, I've got the fully adjustable handlebars. I'm going to do a video on those. I really like these handlebars. They're fully adjustable. I can put them anywhere I want to. I've got them now. My main thing, I wanted to get them closer to my torso because I didn't want to have to bend over so much because I have a lot of trouble with the palms of my hand, especially my right hand, numbing up on me in as little as six to seven miles of riding. So I've got the new handlebars out. I've tried those out a few times. They seem to be working like a charm. So let me get into a little bit now on what this video is about. And of course, it's about changing out the freewheel. I bought this freewheel, purchased it off of Amazon. I think it was about $31, something like that. And the stock freewheel on these Palernas are 13-28T freewheel. The one I put on here is 11-32T freewheel. So not only have I got a much higher gear, I've also got a much lower gear. Went from a 28, on the low end I went from a 28 to a 32, and on the high end I went from a 13 to 11. So this will alleviate that out of control spinning when you get above 20 miles per hour on these bikes. I don't know why they they put them out with the class three rating at 28 miles an hour and, and they gear them up the way they do because they're geared too low. They're geared fine for a class two 20 mile per hour bike, but once you get over 20 miles per hour and those cadences start getting up 85, 90, 100, 100 plus RPMs, that, that's way too much for the average uh, biker to do. So without further ado, I'll start explaining a few things. First thing I did on mine was I inverted my bicycle, I turned it upside down. Now I've got a work stand, so I put it on a work stand upside down. I would strongly recommend that you, if you have a work stand or whatever you have, to invert the bike. It's just much easier to slip these wheels on and off with it inverted than it is when it's upright. Even when it's upright on a stand, it's still hard to get the bikes back into the, the forks properly. So I strongly advise flipping your bike over. If you don't have a bike stand, just flip it over on the handlebars. And I've got a couple of little deals. I'll, I'll post these. They are jack stands that go on the handlebars. They're a nice, nice little addition to your bike. If you ever caught out on the road and you have to flip it over anything, or even if you're in your workshop, you can use those. And what it does, it keeps the handlebars and accessories off the floor. Okay, uh, one of the first things you do when you turn it over to uh, remove your rear wheel, you want to get your chain out of the way. So go ahead and take your chain off the chain ring. Just get it off the chain ring and let it, that way it's real loose. And that does a couple of things. It makes the chain, makes you you're able to take the chain and get it out of the way when you're removing the wheel. And also it relieves the tension on the derailleur <clears throat> because you don't want the derailleur to be overlapping your cogs when you're trying to get your, your wheel off because it, it, it gets in the way. So they are my first two recommendations. I also want to point out when, all, when you do remove your rear wheel, go ahead and make sure that you've got your derailleur in your high gear. So to put the chain down as close to the uh, fork as possible. That way you, you get it out of the way. Uh, don't, don't let it be in one of your lower gears. It's a good practice to photograph all the items that are going to be removed before you start removing them. Take shots at different angles as needed for reference. You will need a 9mm open end wrench to remove the axle nuts. The power motor cord will need to be disconnected. Note the two arrows on the socket connection straps leading to the motor when reattaching. They will need to align. Also, remove the two tie straps leading to the motor. To my surprise, the motor power cord connection couplet is too large for the axle nut and washer to slip over. This creates a problem because you have to be able to slip the free wheel removal tool over the couplet and cord to get to the free wheel. 
I had two choices, either cut the cord or modify the tool. I chose to modify the tool. I took a hacksaw and cut an open gap in the freewheel removal tool, making the gap wide enough to slide the cord through, thus bypassing the couplet, nut, and washer. By doing this, I needed to make a wedge to fit into the tool opening slot to retain enough pressure to hold the tool from slipping. Turn counterclockwise. Once the old freewheel is removed, it's ready for the new freewheel. I selected the Drift Maniac 8-speed 11-32T freewheel, which I purchased from Amazon. This freewheel is designed for e-bikes. To remove the stock freewheel, a part tool, FR-1.3 freewheel removal will be needed. This is a comparison between the stock freewheel and the replacement freewheel. It is critical that the threading and the height of the replacement freewheel is the same as the stock freewheel. Feed the motor wiring couplet, wire, axle nut, and washer through the center hole in the replacement freewheel. Take and screw the freewheel clockwise to the hub axle. You will need to use the freewheel removal tool to turn the freewheel for installation. You only need to tighten the freewheel enough so that it is seated to the hub axle. Once the wheel is back on the bike, the force of the crank and pedal will tighten the freewheel. Okay, it's time to put everything back together. Real simple. Do the reverse of taking it apart. The main things to be aware of is aligning the motor hub axle. If the bike is upside down, the wiring slot in the axle should be facing up. Note that the axle has two flat sides and they will need to be parallel with the rear fork blade openings for the axle to slide in place. Make sure that the inside washer has the slot pointed up. Make sure that all other washers are in the same order and placement as they were when the wheel was removed. Take caution to align the brake disc to the brake pads in the caliper. Tighten the axle nut to 300 pound inch. If you don't have a torque wrench, just tighten the hell out of them. Check the wheel to make sure everything is aligned properly. Reinstall the bike chain. You will likely need to make some minor derailleur adjustments. I will not be showing how to adjust the derailleur since that would be another video. But I have left a link to the video by Park Tool on adjusting the rear derailleur. Well guys, I appreciate y'all watching this video. I hope that y'all have learned a little bit. Uh, if not, I uh, hope you found it entertaining. So until next time, y'all have a nice day. Thanks for watching.